How you doing everyone? This is Matthias Atva from Direct Dreadnought, your Dreadnought PS4 replay guy. Well, your eyes do not deceive you, this is not a Dreadnought video, but don't worry, I am not switching games. I'm still going to be focused on making the best possible Dreadnought content for you, but there is a game that I'm starting to play on the side, and I'm still very busy with work. So this month, and probably up until mid-November, I'm going to be very pressed for time still, and I think after that we may start maybe a Gundam weekend. And that's right, this is Gundam Battle Operations 2, and if you are new to the channel, you may not know this, but I am a huge Universal Century Gundam fan. There are many Gundam franchises out there, all owned by Bandai and Namco, but the Universal Century is the, in my opinion, best and most comprehensive and longest running storyline which started in the mid to late 70s and has been running today and the shows and the storylines keep getting better and unlike reboots and Disney properties and other such shenanigans that are going on in Hollywood right now, Gundam is a very awesome storyline, very creative and they're always pushing the story forward. They're not rebooting, they're not doing any shenanigans like that, they're not crapping on the past or sending a political message. It has always been a space war opera, and it's very good. And that was the Armored GM launching out of a white base style carrier ship for the United Earth Federation. But in this game, it's not Federation versus Xeon, which are the two main antagonist and protagonist factions in the Gundam universe, in this game, you get to pilot just about every conceivable mobile suit. That's what they call a mech in Gundam. A mobile suit that you could possibly imagine from the entire Universal Century timeline, which spans uh, quite a few movies. The original Gundam series, uh, four uh, one-year war television series, which you're, they're usually about one to two seasons, and then a few seasons of Zeta and Double Zeta Gundam into Char's counterattack, and then into Gundam Unicorn and Gundam Thunderbolt. So it is a comprehensive, long lasting 40 year story, and it keeps getting better and better. The mechs or mobile suits keep getting better and better. And uh, it's, it's a great. It's a great game and a great series, and I'm a huge Gundam fan. So if you're not into Gundam, that's okay. I will be continuing with the Dreadnought content as far as replays, player submitted replay cast tips and news, as well as the new category that me and Yels have jumped into, which is fan-based content creation, and that's fine. But as you see here, the Gundam universe is pretty cool. Imagine taking the World War II scenario in which the world has moved into space and makes colonies in clusters around the six very stable gravity points around the Earth, and those would be the sides. And that's actually real lunar and Earth gravity physics. They're called sides. There are six sides to Earth. And the Xeon in side three decided to rebel against the Earth Federation. And what I like about Gundam is there's no real total good and total bad guys. Well, there are, but the factions and soldiers themselves. Uh, that was a great uh, dispatch, by the way. So this is an armored GM. GM or GEM stands for Gundam Mass Production Variant. And the name of the show I should first start is Gundam. And that's named after a prototype mech or mobile suit created by the United Earth Federation in their uh, beginning losing days of the One Year War. And as I was saying before, the colony cluster Xeon declared independence and did so most violently. And the United Federation, which is very bureaucratic and corrupt, which any one world government would be, was slow to react and had to uh, take several months to catch up in technology. And they call these mechs mobile suits because they were originally construction robots and space fighters are woefully uh, not very effective, especially if they have atmosphere capability. You see I'm, I'm taking a beating here, but it's all right. I'm in the armored gym, so I'll be fine. But uh, the uh, 
Space fighters are actually, what you see in Star Wars and other franchises, are actually really terrible for space. Applying, uh, just doing some repairs right here, by the way. Uh, that's another thing about this game, is that you can jump out of your mobile suit and take command points, repair your mech, uh, attack mechs, you can bail out and use rocket launchers and stuff to attack other mobile suits. So it adds another level to the game, but there is a simplistic version of the game which is 4v4 in which if you just kneel behind cover like in Halo or in Dreadnought where you haven't taken damage for a while you will recover but in the standard version of the game it's 5v5 on either ground or space and I'll get into space combat in a second but they made this prototype Gundam which is a mobile suit and it was simply the best it was the most expensive awesome mobile suit in the universe and it it went to this pilot who is a new type and new types are basically people that spend long enough outside of gravity they develop clairvoyance and and uh, prescience they can look forward in time and have very fast reaction speeds but anyway the United Earth Federation it was awesome they had this super mech and it did well but it couldn't be everywhere in once because the scale of this conflict is much like dreadnought it was solar system spanning and uh... The, the numbers of these robots and ships fighting were in the thousands and tens of thousands for the mobile suits themselves. It was very massive uh, scale. So this Gundam couldn't be everywhere at once, so they mass-produced it. Uh, kind of imagine if there is a prototype Super Sherman and all the rest of the Sherman tanks were the GIMs, the GMs, the Gundam mass production units. So this is a ground battle, and you can see it really captures the feel of Gundam. If you're a Gundam fan or have seen the series, you see that uh, it captures the movement, and then when you fly, it's, it doesn't feel like you're some kind of cheesy Superman or something like that. You can feel the engines revving up, and you can still be very mobile and quick, but there are penalties. Uh, if you fly too high and hit the ground, you can see the ground shake and that you're stunned for a little bit. And the bullets actually damage components and these shots. If you get a critical hit, you can slow someone down or take out their boosters or their radar. So that's pretty cool. Now the space variant, which I don't have a video for yet, but I will because I love space combat even more than ground combat and always have as far as the cartoons and show and the games that I've played. I've played every single Gundam game ever except the uh, Versus, which is basically Street Fighter 2 version of Gundam, which is just not my thing. If I want to play Street Fighter, I'm going to play Street Fighter. But anyway, the space version is really good. The movement of it is excellent, but I thought I would show you the ground combat capability first. Also, I don't have a really good replay for space yet because I'm just starting out and there are some uh, really good players out there that have leveled up. The, uh, the game is really balanced and there's no faction unfairness because you can be whatever faction you want and still be in a squad of other players from other factions. So there's no, oh, the Gundam is overpowered or the Xeon are overpowered. Uh, no, no matter what faction you go with, you're incorporated into squads of mixed factions. So it's whatever mech you think looks cool or the one you really like and even lower level uh, not so powerful mobile suits can be upgraded very easily and cheaply and uh, to be as good or better than the high level units of the game and there is a cost associated so the bigger and badder mobile suit you have it is limited it, it increases the respawn time and it's also limited by battles and that's another cool feature of the game is that battles randomly spawn and have different limits every couple hours so some battles limit the more super powerful mobile suits so you're forced to use weaker ones and other ones the weaker ones would be suicide because there are no limits so everyone's going to be bringing their best stuff but the only flaw to the game is even though it is free to play it does use the loot box mechanic, and I really can't stand that. I bought uh, the $8 starter encouragement pack or whatever and was able to get 10 loot boxes out of that, and I made away uh, pretty well with it. I got some good stuff, but I didn't get the mechs that I wanted, 
And I have, I have like a list of top five mobile suits that I always play in all of these games. And I just didn't get it. And the pay to win mechanic is there. You can get loot boxes. On average, you get three tokens a day and about 10 tokens will get you, or 30 tokens will get you 10 loot boxes. Three tokens will get you one loot box. But they're encouraging you to spend money on the game. And that's fine, but I hate that you can't do what you want to do in Dreadnought and just go for a ship that you want and instead you have to almost uh, get the mech that you like randomly the good news is that all the mechs are are pretty much uh they're not the same they have different weapons different capabilities but for the most part most of the mechs can be made comparable to each other with just a little bit of work just a little bit of retooling a changing of weapons or whatever so you can have a 350 point Zaku 1 be as effective as a 350 point Type 1 Level 1 Gundam. And I think that's pretty neat because as the war did progress, everyone like in World War II got better, put out better equipment, upgraded old equipment, so on and so forth. So there's that level of uh, technological competition. But anyway... I uh, hope you liked the video. I will be putting out more Gundam videos. I will be chipping away at Gundam. It won't be... I won't be playing it as much as Dreadnought, but I love the game and I simply have to play it, and I will be posting replays every once in a while. So come November, probably expect once a, a week, probably like a Saturday or Sunday thing, like the Mighty Jingles does. Uh, it'll be a casual weekend, no Dreadnought, probably a Gundam video. And we'll explore a little bit more of the lore of Gundam and some of the other sci-fi series that I like while you're watching the replay. Well, I hope you like the Gundam replay. There will be more, but we will be returning to Dreadnought content this week with a, another player-submitted replay cast that will be a triple-view replay cast. And I think you'll like that very much, as well as a very good replay in the Gora Destroyer and, of course towards next weekend there will be the direct dreadnought monthly game and channel update well that's it for me for now and i'll see you soon in sinley bay